Hello everybody, I'm Gleb and right now I'm going to tell you about 5G NR reference signals for beam forming and massive MIMA. As you may already know, uh, the key to success of massive MIMA and beam forming is the channel knowledge information. Uh, the system should know and estimate the channel knowledge information in order to achieve the maximum possible uh, rank for massive MIMA systems and uh, to perform the perfect adjustments of directional beams uh, to gain the reliability and um, throughput. So basically in 5G is used two methods for that reason. Uh, the first one is for TDD mode uh, this is based on sounding reference signals in uplink and a physical uplink common control channel. Uh, this is uh, based on reciprocity. It means that a channel estimation can be performed just in one direction because uh, downlink and uplink operates on the same frequencies and uh, channel behavior is uh, relatively the same, I would say. But in practice, reciprocity-based um, estimation is uh, not so perfect as it should be because um, different equipments, um, because uh, some variety in antenna elements, uh, in frequency, in time domain uh, synchronization. So in practice, uh, such method uh, can be not so perfect. Uh, like in theory. The second method, method is for FDD mode, for frequency division duplex mode. Uh, this is based on channel state information reference signals that transmitted in downlink and feedbacks from user equipment uh, to uplink. Uh, such method is um, good for is good for um, cell edge users, um, is good for um, estimation of um, interference from other users, but, but um, it requires at least in two times more uh, pilots, more reference signals to estimate channel not only in uplink but in downlink as well. Uh, so, for that reason, uh, 3GPP has uh, two methods, basically. Uh, two types of uh, channel state information reference signals. CSIRS type 1 with uh, low density of pilots. This, would, uh, this type would be good for single user MIMA because um, um, pilots uh, reference signals transmitted only every every uh, two resource blocks resource blocks and uh, the second is type 2 reference signals with high density for uh, multi-user MIMA cases because uh, with high density the system can estimate more properly um, interference from other users, from other beams uh, that uh, should not be um, transmitted in some directions, yes, for example. Uh, so with high density reference signals transmitted every resource block. And um, we have additional type of uh, reference signals in 5GNR. We uh, call it tracking reference signal with a very high density every three resource block uh, transmitted such signals it used for tracking for beam management and i will tell you about uh, such a reference signal at the end of this video and right now let's talk about other aspects of uh, channel state information reference signals in 5gnr Okay, let's continue with uh, CSIRS. So, why 5GNR has to use uh, such a flexible and multi-purpose channel state information signals? Well, at least for 
applying um, single user MIMA and beamforming, uh, at least for applying multi user MIMA. Because um, as you may know, nowadays traffic are very bursty. There is a very little probability uh, for network uh, to have a connection um, at the same time with multiple users, which downloads a huge amount of data. Uh, the, the traffic from messengers and uh, browsers are um, not so big and very bursty by the nature. So for that reason, uh, such systems should use very flexible uh, channel state information reference signals and feedbacks from user equipment in order to estimate the uh, and uh, perform uh, the exact number of uh, beams and uh, spatial layers for particular cases. So the base station, 5G base station, can configure the user equipment to use uh, channel state information reference signal for next reasons. First of all, for beam management and measurements. Uh, in order to user equipment uh, would be able to estimate and cal calculate uh, channel quality indicator, rank indicator, uh, pre-coded matrix indicator, and um, send uh, these measurement reports uh, to a uh, base station uh, in order to um, understand and estimate correctly the directional beams. Uh, CSI RS can be used for connected mode mobility for uh, calculating RS, RP, RSRQ, SNR, or uh, SCNR uh, for connected mode mobility. Um, such signals can be used for radio link failure detection in order to understand if the uh, channel uh, is out of synchronization or in uh, synchronization. Uh, CSI RS can be used for beam failure detection and recovery. Based on uh, estimation of such signals, um, user equipment uh, can be forced to perform a contention-free random access attempt is uh, when a base station assign dedicated preamble to user equipment to perform random access uh, in order to uh, recover from beam failure. Uh, channel state information reference signals can be used for time and frequency uh, synchronization. Um, we can call it, as I've mentioned before, tracking reference signals. This is a kind of uh, replacement that was in LTE. In LTE we uh, have uh, cell reference signals for that purposes and in 5GNR we use tracking reference signals for that purposes and uh, such signals can be used for uh, coordination and multi-point uh, transmission this is a very interesting feature i suppose i will tell you in my next videos about that so uh, so it's important to say that uh, such measurements uh, they can be Periodic, aperiodic, or um, semi persistent, semi persistent measurements. Uh, so, uh, periodic uh, based on RRC messages. Are periodic and semi-persistent based on DCI uh, commands and uh, such measurements um, uh, can be uh, transmitted by user equipment to base station via PUCCH or uh, PUSCH channels. What's more, I want to say that um, CSI RS um, has uh, the same subcarrier spacing as um, the current bandwidth part. 
this is very important to know and understand that means that most of this that I've said right now it it is related to uh, bandwidth part it is related to current uh, bandwidth part for user equipment so what's more I would like to add is um, that for example connected mode mobility and beam management uh, can be based on CSIRS or it can be based on SSB block SSB um, RSRP our SRQ measurements or uh, signal noise interference ratio so um, there are multiple cases and multiple purposes in order to use either CSI RS mobility or uh, SSB mobility based okay uh, let's continue to talk about uh, CSI RS signals Basically, there are two types of uh, CSI RS signals from a uh, power transmitted point of view. The first one is non-zero power CSI RS. Uh, this is uh, mainly used for most of the cases, for beam management, for beam measurements, um, for connected mode mobility, all of all that I have listed before. Uh, this is a dedicated signaling from base station to user equipment to configure uh, the reception of uh, such signals. And um, zero power CSI RS. This is a special uh, empty uh, resource elements for measurements, uh, for interference measurements. We can see it in my example here, the servant cell. This is a resource grid, resource um, elements here. And uh, this for resource element is empty uh, because um, in this field would be measured background interference. And here, this is our background interference from other cells. And as a result, user equipment uh, would see that picture uh, would uh, see resource elements uh, from servant cell and empty resource element uh, with uh, uh, interference from background uh, from neighbor cells. And uh, user e equipment can compare uh, the SNR level between uh, interference resource elements and uh, uh, resource elements uh, not empty uh, which from servant cell so as you can see this method uh, can be used only if uh, CSI RS signals are configured and plan uh, accordingly because um, if each cell has the same CSI RS uh, signal locations uh, such method would be compromised and uh, there will not be any benefits from uh, zero power CSI RS okay let's continue to talk about a CSI RS signal okay let's briefly talk about a CSI RS code books uh, there are two approaches basically uh, the first approach is when we pre-code CSI RS um, signals together with traffic, together with demodulation reference signals. Uh, let's imagine here we can put our CSI RS signals. And all of these uh, signals go together directly to logical ports or as we can say virtual ports of antennas. Actually if you want to know more about logical ports, physical ports of antenna. I've already told about uh, the topic in this video. So let's continue. Um, what's uh, the advantage of uh, such pre-coding uh, method? Is, uh, uh, the main advantage is uh, CSI RS, um, they pre-coded, they beam formed together with data traffic. So it means that um, 
it is more reliable estimation for user equipment. It uh, connects directly to data traffic and um, it helps uh, to um, not, not depends to the number of antennas. It means that uh, CSI RS signals in such precoding scheme depends, uh, not, depends on uh, not uh, the number of uh, transmitted antenna, uh, but uh, there are only dependencies on, on uh, the number of beams. And that's very important because it helps us to um, uh, use less uh, CSI RS signals for uh, massive antenna arrays. Uh, and this will lead to less pilot overhead in this case. And the second approach is uh, non-precoded. Actually, I've, uh, I draw here the non-precoding Precoded approach, as you can see, a CSI RS for each polarization uh, they uh, put it uh, for each um, layer here, and uh, then direct connection to logical ports. So uh, this uh, approach is uh, just less complex and can be used as well. Okay, let's move on. Okay, uh, let's right now calculate the number of beams for um, a real antenna system. Uh, the number of beams uh, depends on the number of polarization. In most of the cases uh, for X polarization, it will be two, basically. Uh, the second uh, case is number of virtual antenna ports or logical antenna ports. Let's um, suppose this is N1 and N2. Over, sam uh, over sampling factor, this is a special factor uh, that you can find in 3GPP specifications, in special table O1 and O2. So by this, we can calculate uh, by multiplexing N1, O1, the number of beams in a row for antenna system and uh, N2 and O2, the number of beams for a column. So, if we put some numbers from uh, 3GPP table for oversampling factor, we can uh, find that it can be from 8 to uh, 256 beams for a real antenna system. So, uh, what else I would like to say? That the number of virtual antenna ports uh, has the direct connection to uh, the number of CSI RS signals or sometimes it may be called ports as well. So for example, um, let's assume that our virtual antenna ports looks like this uh, for elements and we have eight antenna ports, eight ports. And for each port, for each polarization, we need a CSI uh, reference signal. So it means that in this case would be uh, eight CSI RS used. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that some uh, resource element should be occupied. And uh, of course, this will lead to, um, to the case that resource elements, they dedicated for reference signals, not for traffic. So that's why uh, more virtual ports, uh, more antenna uh, system with uh, multiple sub-arrays, uh, this is not every time uh, the best solution for your network, because um, in this case you need more and more uh, CSI RS resources uh, that will occupy your resource grid in 5G and R uh, radio interface. Um, so in 5G, it can be in 5G, it can be up to 32 CSI RS signals, and uh, for example, in 4G, it can be up to 10. 10. CSI RS 
signals. Uh, moreover, in 5G, uh, CSI areas, uh, they're more flexible, um, they can be adjusted and they don't transmit every time like in LTE cell reference signals. So, okay, let's move on with our uh, CSI RS signals. Okay, uh, right now let's talk about tracking reference signal, TRS. So what is it TRS? TRS, this is downlink signal that can be used by user equipment to track, to estimate time and frequency variations uh, for channel, for radio channel. Uh, basically, TRS, as I've already said before, TRS is a set of uh, channel state information reference signal. This is just a set of uh, CSI RS with special configuration, with special TRS flag uh, in parameters. Uh, TRS can be used for the whole bandwidth part and uh, this is very important. That's actually the answer to the question why not to use the modulation reference signals for all of these purposes, for, for the purpose of uh, channel state information uh, acquiring, yes? Uh, the thing is the modulation reference signals, uh, they connected to SSB blocks, so they connected to data channels or control channels, but uh, CSI RS or TRS uh, they um, allocated to the whole bandwidth part or basically to the whole cell. Uh, so that's the question, uh, that's the answer to that question. Okay, next point is uh, TRS can be periodic or aperiodic. Uh, aperiodic uh, TRS uh, transmission can be used after um, bandwidth part switching or after um, a cell switching between uh, different cells, uh, for example, handover, yes? So what does it mean? It means that we need to tune uh, transmission in frequency domain, in time domain before uh, start uh, data transmission. So that's why we can use aperiodic uh, TRS in order to tune transmission uh, for new bandwidth part, let's say. Uh, the next point, TRS uh, has high density, as I've already mentioned uh, at the start of this video. It occupies three resource elements per, uh, per resource block, but, but even uh, with such high density, TRS uh, occupies less, this is less uh, than uh, cell reference signals, cell reference signals in LTE. So this is, uh, it means that TRS require less overhead overall for the whole system. Okay, uh, this was my short lesson about channel state information signals and beamforming and MIMA massive array techniques. So if you like this uh, video, you can like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, you can send me your questions to link it in or to uh, comments below. Um, and stay tuned with uh, IoT Understanding channel. Goodbye.